My name is Jamie McDonald. I'm an attorney with McDonald Law Offices. Our firm represents individuals in bankruptcy cases through the entire, throughout the entire state of Arizona. Today I'm going to discuss the typical Chapter 7 timeline with you. As soon as you retain our offices to represent you in a Chapter 7 case, you may begin referring your creditors to us. Simply, when they call, simply tell them that you retain McDonald Law Offices, and if they have any questions, please call 480-968-3100, and we will deal with them at that time. We'll notify them of the status of your case, the chapter you're filing, and so on. At the time you retain, we give you a questionnaire and a checklist to take home so you can gather all the information, answer all the relevant questions, put together everything we will need to properly process your case for filing with the court. Some of the information we are going to request will be copies of your pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, uh, creditor information, and so on. As soon as you provide that information to us, we will begin processing your case. Providing that you've provided everything that we have requested, we can process your case in a matter of days. Sometimes if we get bombarded with cases, it could take us a week to prepare your case, but often we have it done in a matter of days. At this time, you should also do your credit briefing through the approved credit counseling agency. At the time we, at the, during your first meeting, we give you a brochure uh, regarding the companies that you can look at and, and take the course through. Uh, it's a very simple process. It usually takes about 45 minutes. Uh, the credit counseling agency will have you provide them with your income, expense, and creditor information. Then they will explain the different options that are available to you. Most companies allow you to do it online or on the phone, and there are a number of companies where you can also schedule an appointment and go into their office as well. Once we file your case, the automatic stay immediately goes into place. This stay is very important. It stops all your creditors from taking action against you. They can no longer garnish your wages, call you, file lawsuits against you. From that point forward, they have to deal with the bankruptcy court in our office. Within a matter of days of the filing of your case, perhaps seven to ten days, the court will have appointed a Chapter 7 trustee. That trustee will send you a letter requesting certain information from you. Most of the information they are going to request you've already provided to us. So it's always a good idea when you're putting the information together for us, make a se separate set of documents for the trustee in anticipation of his or her request. The trustee is required to give you a deadline. You, the court needs your case to be in and out of the system as quickly as possible, so they're going to give you a deadline, usually of about 14, 15 days, to provide the documents to them. It's crucial that you meet that deadline. So you want to have the information preferably available even before you file the case so that as soon as you get the request, you can forward them the information to the trustee. 30 to 45 days from the filing of your case, you must attend a required meeting of creditors. This is also a very simple meeting, a very simple process. One of our attorneys will meet you at the meeting. We will be there with you. Uh, the court schedules usually about six cases per half hour. When it's your turn and the trustee calls your name, we approach the table uh, with you. The first thing you do is you hand the trustee your driver's license and social security card. The trustee briefly looks at them, the IDs, hands them back to you, then asks you a very simple series of questions. Once the trustee has completed the questioning, he or she will inquire whether any creditors are present, 99% of the time, no creditors are there, and then your meeting is over. The entire meeting usually takes three to five minutes. No later than 45 days from the date that you attend the meeting of creditors, you're required to obtain and file a financial management certificate. You, this, this certificate is obtained often through the same company you went through for the first certificate, but there are many companies that you can go through. You can pick a different one if you like. Uh, whichever one you choose, they uh, will we'll go over household budgets with you. It takes roughly two hours to complete that course. They will give you a certificate almost identical to the first certificate you received, only this one will say Certificate of Education on it. You must provide us with a copy of the certificate. We prefer if you can actually do the course, take the course before you go to the meeting of creditors, that would be preferable. Then you can bring an extra copy to the meeting, give it to one of our attorneys. We take it back to the office and file it after the meeting. You're done with that requirement. If you'll be reaffirming a debt, such as a vehicle loan, the reaffirmation hearing usually takes place somewhere between 30 and 60 days after the date of your meeting of creditors. 61 to 100 days from the date of the meeting of creditors, the court enters your discharge. Once the court enters that discharge, discharging your debts, they send a copy to you and each one of your creditors. It's crucial that you keep that copy 
Just put that with your important papers. It shows that you've completed your case and you received a discharge of your debt. If you have any questions regarding any of this, just please give us a call at 480-968-3100. We'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.